Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and based. I'm also a big fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share a few of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today, in 1848, a guy named Karl Marx and another one named Friedrich Engels released a little pamphlet they'd written called the Communist Manifesto. That little pamphlet was filled with some pretty big ideas. So let's reverse and dive in to try and understand one of the most incendiary and important documents of the 19th century, which still influences politicians today. The manifesto was published by a group of revolutionary socialists in London who called themselves the Communist League. Though the pamphlet's ideas are quite complex, and we'll get into that, the main idea behind the text was that the fundamental root of society as we know it to be was formed by class struggle. The revolutionary position they took was that once the working class overthrew the ruling class, inequity would cease to exist. So wait a minute. The revolutionary socialists were called the Communist League, and the book, The Communist Manifesto, was also liked by socialists? What's the difference there anyways? Well, there are some similarities and some differences. Both communism and socialism advocate for public ownership instead of privatization, and both are anti-capitalist in that they believe that the wealth gap was caused by capitalism and seek to fix the exploitation of workers that happened in a capitalist society. Communism and socialism differ in that communism is more radical in its methods. Marx himself didn't provide a clear distinction between the two in his work, so a lot of the differences between the two philosophies have actually developed since his death. But let's reverse to his birth. Karl Marx was born in Prussia, a former German state in Europe, in 1818. He went to university to study law and philosophy and was influenced by the German philosopher Hegel and his belief that all of reality can be expressed through explanation and categorization. He began editing a liberal democratic newspaper in Cologne, but eventually the Prussia authorities shut down the paper for taking too radical of a stance on local issues. After the paper shut down, Marx moved to the more liberal Paris to work for a new political literary review. Paris was teeming with socialists at the time, so Marx was coming into a welcoming community. Marx came to be a part of the most extreme faction of the community who focused on communism and met the man who he'd go on to work with on the Communist Manifesto, Friedrich Engels. Prior to their meeting, Engels had already published work on socialism, and the work was entitled The Condition of the Working Class in England. Though communism and socialism are both hot-button words these days that people can sometimes see through a biased lens, for now, we're going to talk about the traditional definitions of the terms as defined by the people in these social circles at the time. At the time, communism called for a revolution by the working class that would take down capitalism and offer the possibility of a more just and equal society. Marx was kicked out of France in 1845 and moved to Brussels. Engels came to join him to continue their work together. They spent the next few years honing their philosophies about communism and becoming local thought leaders in the worker-led revolution. Marx and Engels joined a secret society of German revolutionaries called League of the Just, though it was renamed to the Communist League. They hoped to connect the group with similar ones across the continent. The Communist Manifesto began as a project for the two men to summarize the doctrines of the Communist League. He wrote the text in January 1848 and sent it back to London where the League loved it and decided it would be their manifesto, hence it being called the Communist Manifesto. Of course, Marx is by no means the inventor of communism, but the way he synthesized the ideas and told the story of the struggle of the worker through history made his own interpretation of communism unique and thus led to its eventual popularity and lasting impact. He outlined the abolition of private property and a system where the workers own the means of production, and land. His flair for the dramatic helped make the manifesto what it was as well, with an opening line that's hard to forget. A specter is haunting Europe, the specter of communism. The last lines are nothing to snooze at either. The proletarians have nothing to lose but their chains. They have a world to win. Workers of the world unite. 
This bombastic phrasing is part of what endeared Marx to his following and the comrades in the Communist Party, that and his dreams for a better world. In the manifesto, he foretold of a revolution that was coming soon enough for every worker to benefit. Better yet, he was right. The pamphlet had barely been in the world a week before an uprising broke out in France over the banning of socialist political meetings. This coincidence cemented the popularity of the Communist Manifesto and was reprinted three times in the first month of his existence, and a second edition was published soon after. The early riots in France became an all-out revolt, and King Louis-Philippe ended up abdicating the throne, and revolutionary spirit began to spread across Europe. Sadly, like many revolutions before it, this one was stopped by the bourgeois, as Marx had also predicted the bourgeois would do anything to keep their power. Not to be dissuaded, Marx and Engels continued to organize for the communist movement. He went on to found the International Working Men's Association and in 1867 published the first volume of Das Kapital, his magnum opus on communist theory. Despite how many copies of the Communist Manifesto were printed when it was distributed, very few originals survive today. But you can pick up a new edition of either, wherever books are sold. Now let's talk about music history. Today, in 2002, Nora Jones released her debut album. Come Away With Me was recorded in New York City and went on to peak at number one on the Billboard 200. The album was beloved both publicly and critically, getting the Grammys for Album of the Year and Best Pop Vocal Album. Its success wasn't just momentary. It went on to become one of the best-selling albums of all time. Jones sings in a compilation of pop, acoustic, and jazz, a distinct style that created such memorable hits as Don't Know Why and Come Away With Me. Though Come Away With Me is still her most popular work, Jones certainly hasn't stopped creating music. Just last year, she released her new album, Pick Me Up Off The Floor. I have a personal tie to Nora Jones, not because I know her or anything, but my manager, Max, absolutely adores her. I don't even know if there has been quite a day that has gone by where I've seen my manager, Max, and not had Nora Jones be mentioned. Max, love you lots, but not as much as you love Nora Jones. And now for our final segment of the day, I'm going to be looking into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a February 26th in my life. On February 26, 2018, I released my song, Don't Play Your Card, on SoundCloud. And I have a video of me here clicking my hair straightener together because I didn't know how to use drum pads or software in order to have percussion elements. So naturally, I clacked my hair straightener together to have like a little nice hi-hat effect on top of the song. Um, I also, it's my only song that I have cursed in. I have not released a song since that I have said a curse word, although I curse constantly. It's very fascinating to me that I haven't put it into more songs. I guess we'll have to see when that moment happens. Thanks for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you can come back tomorrow for more facts from yesterday. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon I'm gonna teach you stuff, no it won't be tough Gonna go a year till you've had